On the banks of the Shipra River, in the ancient, magnificent city of Ujjain, lived a vivacious young girl, Leelavati, offspring of Bhaskaracharya, the illustrious mathematician and astronomer. Her horoscope had prophesied that Leelavati may never experience marital bliss. The determined father used his knowledge of astrology to calculate a single auspicious time when Leelavati's marriage ceremony could be performed. On the day of the marriage, Leelavati was standing beside the hourglass meant to keep time and a tiny bead from her necklace unwittingly fell into the hourglass and the auspicious moment passed by without notice. The popular story behind the ancient mathematical treatise Leelavati was written by the 12th century mathematician of India, Bhaskaracharya, in order to keep his daughter's memory alive. As India is the land of epics, myths and folklores, the story of Leelavati is also probably one of half-truths and historical facts. The book Leelavati, however, as a brilliantly unique work on mathematics, is a reality. So is Bhaskaracharya, one of the towering figures in the long mathematical tradition of India. By the middle of the 3rd century BCE, there is clear evidence for the written representation of numbers in the form of Brahmi numerals, some of the earliest attempts of representing numbers with unique symbols. By 500 CE, we have the beginning of what is known as the Classical Age of Indian Mathematics, an era of great surges in mathematics and in astronomy. Aryabhata, Varaha Mihira, Brahmagupta, Bhaskara, Lala, Govindaswami, Mahavira, Shankara and Sridhara are a few of the brilliant minds who contributed to the growth of mathematics in India. Bhaskaracharya was a worthy successor to this great lineage. The birth date of Bhaskaracharya can be deciphered from the following verse that appears in his text, Siddhanta Shiromani. I was born in the Saka era, 1036, and I wrote Siddhanta Shiromani in Saka, 1072 at the age of 36. An inscription in stone found in the ancient Bhavani temple of the Patan village in Maharashtra offers an important pointer to Bhaskaracharya's paternal ancestry. The inscription, which archaeologists have dated as being from 1207 CE, was made at the behest of Kangadeva, the grandson of Bhaskaracharya. I am Changadeva, the chief astrologer to King Simgana and the son of Lakshmidhara, who by King Jaitrapala was appointed as the court pundit. My father was the son of Bhaskara, the astronomer. My grandfather was born to the great poet Maheshwaracharya. He was the son of Manoratha, who was born to Prabhagara. His father was Govinda Sarvatna. Govinda was born to Bhaskara Bhatta. Bhaskara Bhatta's father was the renowned poet Trivikrama. Bhaskaracharya's compilations of mathematical ideas are presented in his three great works, the Leelavati, Bijaganita and the Siddhanta Shiromani, and in his own commentary in Vasana Bhashya. Leelavati is a text where a large number of mathematical ideas and algorithms are presented in the form of engaging puzzles. Leelavati, compared to other texts, is unique because of its high poetic value. It's not that we didn't have texts which deal with the topics which are being dealt with in Leelavati in other works. But what is so special, as Bhaskaracharya promises right at the beginning of the text, as well as concludes with the same theme towards the end of the text, is Lalitya Leelavati. See, he says, Sankshiptakshara Komala Malapadaihi Lalitya Leelavati. 
So all that Bhaskara seems to have done in this text is apart from certain mathematical aspects which have been improvised, he has presented it in a such a charming way and that is why I would say the text Leelavati is a very meaningful name. The text Leelavati is filled with examples where mathematics is brought to life through varied and rich metaphors and scenes from everyday life. An interesting problem again to deal with this unknown quantities in connection with the bees which are flying from here and there, from one tree to other tree. He conceives of a certain so beehive. So from the beehive he says Pancham Sholi Kulatka Damba Magamastram Sham Shilindram Tayo Vishleshastri Gunomragachi Kutajam Dolaya Mano Para Kante Keta Kamalati Parimala Prapte Kakala Priyadutahuta Itastato Prapati Ke Bringoli Sankyam Vada The geometric principles on right angle triangles and the measurements of their sides were known to Bhaskaracharya. In a captivating example, Bhaskaracharya creates a scene that engages the reader with the basics of right angle geometry. This is a mathematical problem where one has to deal with not one but two right angle triangles with a common altitude. The book Leelavati contains innumerable such examples that illustrate not just Bhaskara's mastery over mathematics, but his sublime poetic sense as well. A particularly tantalizing example is a question that cannot be solved except through the formulas on permutation. Another great work of Bhaskaracharya is Bija Ganita, the book on algebra. The text name is derived from the notion that algebra is the bija, the seed of all mathematics. In Bija Ganita, Bhaskara elaborates on a method for finding solutions for Pell's equation, a proof wrongly attributed to John Pell, a 17th century English scholar who only referred to the equation in one of his texts. This form of equation was known in India much earlier under the name Varga Prakriti or equation of the multiplied square. Bhaskara developed a Chakravala or cyclic method of solution which required only a few easy steps to arrive at the solution. In his quintessential style, Bhaskara makes another creative stroke in Bijaganita to describe the difficult concept of infinity. Through a philosophical metaphor, 
सिद्धांत शिरोमणि द थर्ड ग्रेट टेक्स्ट रिटन बाय भास्कराचार्य इज लार्जली द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स टू एस्ट्रोनॉमी The Siddhanta Shiromani is the canonical or one of the canonical forms, uh, uh, instances of the type of astronomical text called the Siddhanta. And that was the theoretical treatise par excellence that included in its Ganatha or calculation chapter rules for computing everything you would want to know about the positions of the planets, the stars, the uh, sun and moon at uh, any given time, any information for calendars, any information uh, you would collect for astrology, and then the uh, text also included the Gola chapter, which is the work on the spherical geometry and the cosmology that's implied in the models of the universe that are being used to make the calculation. A remarkable verse in the Bhuvanakosha chapter of Gola Dhyaya informs us that Bhaskara, like his predecessors Brahmagupta and Bhaskara, was aware of the concept of gravitational force 600 years before Isaac Newton. Akrishta shakti scha mahita yayat khastham guram swabhimukham swashaktiya akrishyate tat patati vabhati Leelavati was translated into Persian during Akbar's time by his court historian and scholar Abu al Faiz. Bija Ganitha was translated into Persian during Jahangir's period by Abdul Rashti. Even before Akbar and as early as the 12th century, a number of important Arabic works based on translations of Indian texts on mathematics and astronomy came out. Ultimately, a few Latin translations of these Indo-Arabic works traveled into wider Europe and perhaps aided the West towards a period of enlightenment, the European Renaissance. In 12th century, uh, Western world had just started uh, translation industry from Arabic to Latin and all scientific treatises like Euclid was translated first by Adelaide of Bath in 12th century. Euclid is the very basis of mathematics in the western mathematical field. So whether it is Euclid or any philosophical treatises they were translated into Latin from Arabic uh, in the 12th and 13th century. So it is when Bhaskaracharya was describing, innovating, developing uh, mathematical theories based on his predecessors like Brahmagupta and many other further, uh, Western world was just learning from Arabic and Persian text, mathematical and many other new ideas, which ultimately culminated into Renaissance. And we know that Renaissance really made huge contributions from 15th century onwards. That's about 300 years after Bhaskaracharya. The life of Bhaskaracharya helps us recall the vast tradition of learning that shaped the glorious history of India. This was a period that also marked achievements in science and politics, philosophy, literature, drama, art and architecture all achievements whose depth we are yet to fully fathom.